Hello and welcome to the Reverse Tarot Pilot. Good evening, good morning, good afternoon to those of you who are here live. Really appreciate you joining me live at very short notice because I only put this out less than 48 hours ago. I've been mulling the idea over um, since the 10th of this month and I just thought, you know what, let's do it. So let's get started. Now, in terms of what I'm thinking about with this one, I'm going to explain to you in terms of the overview for this pilot, why I've called it reverse tarot, the idea behind the potential series. I haven't decided if I'm going to roll it out yet. Possible solutions to big life questions. So we're going to do a little segment on that. A theme tarot, we've got a poll for those of you who are here live. Talk about some potential next steps if people like the idea and think actually I'd be interested in participating in that. We'll close with a coaching card reflection. Well, I'll pull from one of my coaching card decks. And then if there are any final penultimate or ultimate questions that you want to ask, then feel free and I'll take those from the chat. And then we will kind of do a close. Now, for those of you who are like, I don't even know what really tarot is and how does it work and what can you sort of expect? This is just a very quick compendium. There's something that I run every month called Tarot Tuesday, for example, in my membership group. And I've also been reading tarot for, gosh, a good 26 or so years now. Things I hear most commonly is you said it would happen X time and it did. So I had two people actually that I did readings for one of them, they did a 12 month reading. So I did the reading in January and I did 12 cards. So I said one for each month of the year. We were speaking, I think it was back in June. And they said, Marilyn, because I did a recording, there was a transcript. And they said they went back and looked at the transcript, listened to that bit of the recording. And something that I said would happen in May happened in May. The following weekend, I was with a friend. We were at an event in Watford, Taste of the Caribbean. Fantastic. And they said, oh, you know, that reading you did for me, you said this was going to have such and such was going to happen in May. It happened in May. I was like, whoa. So I don't really, once I've said it, it's just gone out of my head. I'm not really thinking about what I've said to people. So that's really interesting. People often say, wow, amazing. Good job I was sitting down, spot on. And you're not going to believe this. And I hear that a lot from coaching clients as well in terms of those wonderful synchronicities. And this was one of the pieces of feedback from someone who did the Tarot Tuesday because often I do the Tarot Tuesday to myself because there's no one there <laughs> I do it in the Facebook group I do it at random times uh, first Tuesday of the month and so people come and watch the recording afterwards so somebody said hi Marilyn I've just listened to the recording and OMG what can I say but you were a million percent spot on with my reading I'm blown away with it all so they're always really fun to do really interesting I'm not making any claims or any predictions about what's going to happen these are for entertainment purposes only, and they're always really interesting. There's a little bit of that because I've been talking about Einstein and spooky action at a distance with all the stuff I've been doing with the um, remote energy experiments. And <clears throat> it reminds me of the thing that Einstein was saying about spooky action at a distance. So in terms of for those of you who haven't been here in the live before, I think actually, every, let me go back to my audience page rather than recording. I think what I can see from my audience page, you pretty much know this already for the majority of people who are here. But just in case you need a refresher, you've got two buttons. So where where Arnica has said good evening and I said, give me a moment, I'm updating to the latest version of Chrome. That's public. So whatever name you signed in with, people will see that name. If you look next to it, that red arrow, which is the Q&A. The Q&A is private, so that just comes to me. No one else can see the Q&A. So that's how you can interact and share your feedback. I think for this one, I've said it so that you can, if you wanted to say something on camera or your mic, uh, you can do that. But just be aware you'll be part of the recording that then gets shared more publicly. So in terms of why reverse tarot, when I do my tarot and Huna big clearing call, people book and they want an individual reading. Now, unless somebody sends me an email, which I normally don't, I kind of discourage it. <laughs> I don't really want to know what you want the reading to be about. I'm just going to do the reading, what I call cold reading. So I don't know what the reading's about. I just know that a person named X wants a reading and I'll do the reading for X. And then after they've listened to it, or if they're there live, they will then come back with it. Oh my God, that was spot on, even though I've got no idea what they wanted the reading to be about. With this potential webinar series, I'm going to do the opposite, hence the reverse where I will pose a question or we collectively will pose a question and then I'll pull a card in response to that question. 
Now, the reason I don't typically do my readings like that with somebody, so Marilyn, can you do me a reading about, I don't know, working career or relationships or health or whatever it is? Because I don't want to be influenced because let's just say I pull a card and I see an apple on the card and they were asking about health and your logical brain goes, oh, you should eat more fruit. And, and I'm like, ah, so I don't like to be have all of that going on in my head. I just like to keep it clean. Say what's on the card, be done with it. And of course, there are times where somebody has a question, I'll do a reading and then I just have to remind myself to get out of the way. So this time round, I'll pose a question before I pull the card and then we'll see what comes up. So in terms of the types of questions, it might be what I call the big live questions. What's happening in terms of the state of the world? What, if anything, can we do about it? I think there is something we can do. Might be what's a good first step in improving our physical health or our mental health, for example. We could be going down the route of, okay, you feel stuck or stagnated. Let's pull a card on that, see what comes up. Or it could be next steps in terms of work, next steps in terms of life, next steps in terms of career. So that's what I mean when I say the big life questions. And if I decide to do this as a series, I was then thinking, well, actually what we could do is have a, th a theme for each of the calls in the series. And one of the things that's very cool about Tarot, because there are people who have gone back and listened to one of the big clearing calls number one, because they weren't there live, or they might go back and listen to it months or even years later. And one of the things they always say is, my reading was amazing. Wow. Oh, my God. Spot on, etc. And with the readings you did for other people, they also resonated with me, or it spoke to something else that I was thinking about, or just listening to those other readings gave me thoughts, ideas, clarification, insight, food for thought for something that was going on in their own life, even though I wasn't strictly speaking to them. So it's always really interesting. So my intention, if I do this one as a series, is let's say a year after I've run the series, you might have a health thing going on. So you might go back and listen to the reading I did about health. And there'll be things in there that speak to you after the fact. So that's kind of what I'm planning. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to run through the themes that I'm thinking about in no particular order. They're just as I happen to just type them in and then on the website page, the booking page that you use to book to be here. And I just kept them the same. So one of the themes might be health, for example. So your physical health, well-being, and then we'll see what the card throws up. And with all of these also, I've got tarot decks that relates. So I've got a, a Archangel Raphael deck, for example, which is all about health. So health would be one of the themes. Work and career, maybe another one of the themes. So I've got a life purpose deck, for example, which speaks to what's your vocation, what are you here to do in the world, etc. So work and career. Another of the themes could be money and abundance. I surprise, surprise, have a, an abundance tarot deck. And I've also got my own money breakthrough deck. So I would use those decks for this one. Another might be relationships. Surprise, surprise, there is a relationships deck. So one of the themes, one of the weeks, months, however it might be spaced out would be around that. Another one will be life purpose. So this is where the life purpose deck would really come into its own and pulling cards with regards to that. Life guidance, that might be more general and that might also relate to some of these big life questions, things that are going on or people just like, I'm stuck, I'm stagnated, I don't know what to do next. Uh, you just want some clarity, you want some insight, you want something just to shape things up a bit. I'm thinking of that Huna symbol, the, the thunder comes down and strikes the earth and makes the earth shake. It's a bit like that one with this particular theme. I'm also thinking, because the past life stuff is always really interesting when I'm doing breakthrough sessions for clients. So, and there is, surprise, surprise, <laughs> Brian Weiss, a past life deck. So we might do some stuff about past life influences. Are they, do they have an influence on what is happening for you right now? Could be interesting. And then uh, law of attraction could be a really interesting one to do. And it will be no surprise that yes, there is a deck <laughs> specifically about law of attraction. Actually a good one for that might be the um, Esther Hicks and Abraham deck, for example. So that's what I'm thinking of in terms of the particular themes. So this is them in a nutshell. Now, if this works the way I think it's gonna work, Mm -mm -mm. 
somewhere on your screen or device and you can pick more than one answer but i just want to get a sense of what's the most popular so i'm going to hit start polling and then i believe that you will be able to see something on your screen and it's either going to be a pop out a slide out or it will appear somewhere and then you can select which of those themes are you most interested in um doing focusing on etc so if you can see that and it doesn't matter if you can't you can just put into the chat or the q a oh i i'm interested in um, health relationships whatever it might be but if you can see the poll i give you a few moments to fill that in what i will do have some water okay oh so we got a, oh okay sorry it's, it's just i was about to say that it's changing a bit so I will give it a moment. Uh, see what comes in. And of course, if you're watching this as a replay recording, you're not you're probably not going to see the poll because it's going to close after this webinar. So it, it won't be live and active. All right. So we've got a bit of a split. So we've got what's the highest? So we've got okay, um, health is oh no, that's it. Okay. So in the top spot, we've got three things that share the top spot work and career, money and abundance, life purpose. And then we've got a couple that uh, are still included, but not top spot. So we've got health and we have got life guidance. Cool. Okay. And if you happen to be watching this as the replay recording, then you can ping me an email if you have a preference and we can, we can go from there as well. Thank you very much uh, for completing that. Just so I get a little bit of a, a steer in terms of that. Now, in terms of the way I imagine and envision this working in my mind in terms of what's the big idea with the reverse tarot, it will be to run the series where we will go through each of those themes. And then I've also got what I call some wild card decks like the David Bowie deck, for example, beautiful deck. So we might do some sessions as well with the wild card decks. And that will be where we cover those those big life questions. It says X number of calls. So I have no idea. Number one, if it's going to be interesting. Number two, if people are interested. And then number three, how many calls there will be. I'm just going to I was guessing about 12, something like that, I think. Um, and would they be weekly, biweekly, one a month? I haven't decided. That depends on the feedback that I get from this. It will be uh, tapping into the group collective because depending on who's here, both in person and as part of that collective group, I believe, and I know this to be true from when I do the Tarot Tuesday readings, because there's often a theme that comes through the cards that I'm reading, depending on who has said, yes, they want a reading that month. So we're going to tap into one of my clients. Put it, she says, Marilyn, you tap into the zeitgeist. So it's tapping into that collective energy the way that I call it from a Jung perspective. I call it the collective consciousness. We've got this stream of consciousness. You've got a group of people that come together and then you're drawing things down from that. I have no idea if that's the way Carl Jung would describe it, but that's my part of my take on his collective consciousness idea. So we'll have those wild card decks like the bank. I've got a lovely Banksy deck. It was a present for one of my clients. Thanks, Kate. Um, Banksy deck, the Bowie deck the soul oracle deck, the even the communication cards deck and messages from the Lord. And I'm not kidding. Where is it? Hold on. Um, oh, gypsy fortune telling. <laughs> not that one. So I've even got a deck of cards that relate to messages from the Lord. And they are really beautiful. Oh, my God. Full color embossed but like my business card if you ever look at my business card closely as a water drop and the water drop is um is is raised and it's a gloss finish so the water drop glistens when you move the card that's how they've created these cards they're gorgeous so we will choose some of those wild card decks and so if that is of interest i'm kind of guessing it sort of must be maybe if you're someone who pre-registered for the webinar if you're watching this as a replay and you've just happened to chance across it, let's say, then ping me an email, marilyn at transformationstm.com. That's M-A-R-I-L-Y-N at trans, T-R-A-N-C-E, F for Freddie. So F-O-R-M-A-T-I-O-N-S, T-M is in trademark. So marilyn at transformationstm.com. 
ping me an email and let me know if that's of interest. And for those of you who are in the chat, you know, feel free to use the chat Q&A, et cetera. But that's really what I'm planning with regards to this one now. Of course, there's going to be an investment in it. Again, I haven't really... Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm just playing with this. I'm like, OK, when I run the first few for the pilot, it might be £10 a call. This is for people who are pre-registered for the webinar. So if you're watching this on YouTube, you'll be looking at whatever I put in the public column. But for those who pre-registered and are here or you, you're going to be getting the email of the recording, that means you registered before you went live. Today is the 25th of July. So anyone who registered before that, when I say live webinar, that's what I'm talking about, even if you're not here live, but you pre-registered. So I was kind of thinking, oh, you know, £10 a call if people want to do it on an ad hoc, maybe 101 if you want to do for the whole, let's say I do 12. Lifetime members, if I went for the £10, that would be 7 50 per call or £77. And that means you're in my Facebook membership group, you're a lifetime member. For those of you who pay for lifetime membership. Um, public price, I'm thinking, ah, we'll kick it off at around £15 a call while I'm testing it out and seeing how it goes. That'd be around 147 And if you have, if you're an all access pass holder and you know who you are, that means you bought access, the lifetime deal for the 60 plus workshops as it stands at the moment, then this will be free of charge and you can either attend live and I will upload those into the library. So that's kind of what I'm thinking about now. Just to get the ball rolling, what I think we are going to do is I'm going to go back. Let me, OK, easiest way. Let me choose, pull up the slide navigator. Um, is that the one? All right. So this is an idea of the big life questions. I could just take the first one and pull a card on that or you can put some suggestions into the chats if you've got anything you go oh i really want and it's not any i'm not talking about individual questions that's what the the tarot and huna big clearing call is for so it's not like oh what's going to happen with my aunt i'm not talking about that i'm talking about wider bigger questions that can relate to the collective if there's something you've got as a burning question and you're here live put it into the chat put it into the q a and if not I'm going to pick one of them from this um, five since it seems to cover all. OK, any more suggestions? Any more for any more? So what is number five? What are next steps in terms of to work, life or career? And actually, work and career was one of the ones that was at the top of the list. All right. So. Hold on. My Q&A light is on. OK, they're like, fine with that. <laughs> Are you OK? I think you're saying fine with number five, if you just want to clarify. But even if you're not, we might go to number five. But just if you're you might be fine with me choosing from the list or fine with. OK, fine with whatever. OK, cool. <laughs> right. All right. So so holding the intention then for number five, just so we get a sense of how this would work and play out in practice. Now, the way I choose the readings, I'll do exactly the same. I choose the reading. So this is what I can see when I'm choosing the cards. Of course, they're all different on the other side. But I have the pictures facing away from me. So I don't see the card until I've turned it over. So what are we looking at? So what are the next steps to work, life or career now? And reality, if I'm asking that question, I, it'll be work or life or career. However, we're going to do a little bit of everything and we're going to see what that throws up. So give them a good shuffle. Thinking about the collective who are here. What are the next steps to work, life or career? All right. So I'm, ooh, I'm going to go with that one that was right on the end of the deck. And then I'm going to pull what I call a second or confirmation card as well. And, <clears throat> um, ooh, and I'm going to go for that one there. And for those of you who haven't done a, anything with regards to tarot with me before, the way I think about it and the way it kind of comes across, if you've watched Shrek and Donkey, pick me, pick me, pick me. When I'm looking at the cards, even though I'm looking at all of them and I'm, they're all exactly the same. There is a particular card that will stand out, even though they look exactly the same. So and it doesn't mean it's the one that's sticking out. Sometimes I just look at the back of the cards and there's one that 
to glow is, is going a little bit too far, but it's for whatever reason, it stands out. It might look, it might be a slightly different in that moment, a different shade, a different hue, whatever, but there, it just sort of stands out. Right, so let's see, after I've had a sip of water, what we got. All right, let me show you that so you can see it. Oh, hold on, I'm trying to get the light off it. And I will, of course, read it because you might be on a tiny little device. So it says the four of Ariel. This one says when you give, you also receive exclamation mark. Being resistant to change extremes in how you save or spend money. So if I'm looking at this in the context of work, life, career, this one, the first thing that comes to mind is it, the, the sentence that stands out immediately is about being resistant to change. <laughs> it's one of those things. I was a change management consultant for many, many years, started doing that in 2003 and did it pretty much almost full time until 2010 and then has been more intermittent with it. But, you know, long time now. One of the things I often used to say to people when we're in there, because often I'm doing leadership development trainings or if we're implementing what back then were remote working. I know it sounds in 2003, I was a specialist remote working and flexible working implementation consultant. It's all new now since the pandemic lockdown. But I've been doing that for 20 years. So going into an organization to say we're going to be making radical changes in the way that you work and the way that you show up for work and the paraphernalia that you have around you, because many people were losing their cubicles and they were going to a hot desking situation, which was radical in 2003, not so much now. And also there was a clear desk policy in many of those organizations. So you clear your desk at the end of the day. Everyone had a locker and all of the stuff of your desk, you know, little pictures and your, your like, for example, I've got this on my desk. Um, this is a quote from Einstein. That I had on my desk. It's been on my desk since 1995. I know that because I put the date on the bottom of my name so nobody would run off. Whoops, nobody would run off with it. And it says in the middle of difficulty lies opportunity. So all of that stuff, I would have had to pick it up, put it in my locker. The premise being whoever comes in next, they will sit wherever they want to sit. And if it's my desk, we don't want all of my stuff on it because somebody could come and sit there. So I turn up for work the very next day and uh, somebody else is sitting where I was sitting the day before, radical. So one of the things I'll be saying to people, one of the thing, one of the one of the things about change is that it's constant. There are always things changing. Things rarely stay exactly the same. So when you're thinking both about your work, your life, and your career, one of the things I would say is ask yourself how open are you to change or are you just like well you can change that tiny little bit there but not this and not this and not this and not that the reason even as i say that it feels restrictive so one of the things you want to do is perhaps be more expansive hang on that looks a bit wonky give me one sec it just looks like my camera is about to do something really bizarre and fall off Right. Um, so one of the things I would say, maybe when I did that and knocked it with the um, Einstein looping. So one of the things, even though I say that it feels restrictive. So ask yourself the question, have you potentially been restricting potential opportunities? And that might be opportunities for growth, opportunities for development, opportunities for new pathways, opportunities for new ideas, have you perhaps been limiting yourself because you've bought into an idea of the what I call the coulda, shoulda, would of, could have been like that, should have been like that, will have been like that, and you have fixed ideas and expectation about how you think things should be, and therefore, if an opportunity turns up in a different guise, in different clothing, let's say, you're not really going to give it the time of day or you're not necessarily going to pursue it because you've got a fixed idea of how you think sh things should be, how you want them to be, how you expect them to be. And you're not really deviating from that. So this one, I'm going to say, if there's been a bit of restriction in terms of how you think things should go, how you think the time scale should be, what you think should be happening when, let go of that let go of the form and I think that's actually going to come up on a slide that I've got as I close out um, this particular intro so first thing 
let go of any resistance to change as much as people as humans we do not necessarily like change I don't know if anybody remembers this if you've been on Facebook a while ask yourself what did the wall because it used to be called the wall what did the wall look like before the last big update I remember there were whole probably, you know, there were threads with thousands of people on going, I want to keep my old wall. I'm not swapping it over. I'm holding out until the very last minute because there was an option where you could switch to the new version of Facebook or you could just stay as is. There were people up in arms about they not don't want the new version. They're going to keep it and, they, and they're only going to change it when Zuckerberg changes it, etc. Now, if I go back to all of those people, myself included, because I quite like the layout of it before. So I just left it and I thought I'll just let Facebook do the changeover when it does the changeover. I can't actually genuinely remember what the wall was like before. And many people can't. And I could have asked them that question six weeks after it changed. and They probably wouldn't remember. But they were absolutely against the idea when it was first mooted. So it's easy to get kind of stuck in your way. So notice that. Now, <clears throat> when you give, you also receive. What comes to mind about that? Okay, this one feels like we're more on the receiving end. And many people are what I call very good givers, but receiving help is not always the easiest thing to do even asking for help and support. So let's just say it was around work and career, for example. You might be looking for a new role, a new position. You may be the only one who knows, or, you know, family might know you're looking, etc. But this is one where you might be brave and do something different. As one of my, as somebody, like Amy Porterfield, I've done some of her podcasts and webinars, she calls it DSD, do something different. And of course, she's not the only person to have ever said that. It's just it, she comes into my mind as somebody who says it a lot. So you might think, you know, normally what I would do is I would be quietly in the background. I'm, you know, researching. I'm applying for things. I'm looking at what's there, maybe seeing if there are any agencies, all of that sort. You might do something different and say, look, if, I, if you're on LinkedIn, for example, you might go on to LinkedIn and say, this is a position I'm looking for. Or you don't even have to say it's you. You might say, if any of you hear of a position which and then give the title or some of the things you really want to do, let me know or send me a DM as in you're asking someone to direct message you. It might be that absolutely nothing happens and it could be on the off chance that somebody looks at it. They're in a meeting at the place where they work or they're having a conversation or someone actually says to me, you don't know anyone who dot, 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 dot. And you go, oh, my goodness. Somebody I know was asking about that the other day. Let me go and check and see if they or whoever they're looking for is still looking. You never know. But you, what you do is you open the door to those wonderful synchronicities. So be OK asking for help, telling people what it is you want and require. And just notice what you notice and what comes from there. So what else we got here? So hold on one second. Let me just do this for a moment. So when you give, you also receive being resistant to change extremes in how you save or spend money. So this is that boom and bust energy, all or nothing in or out. I saw very well to say that. Sorry, I, the thing in my head is consistency. So and I was going to say what's well to say consistency, but how do you get it? What does it mean? So one of the things you might ask, depending on are you talking about work? talking about life you're talking about career if you were to have more consistency and particularly where we're talking about the flow money in and out spending saving if you were to have more consistency number one what does consistency in the context of whatever you're thinking about mean to you and number two what could you do to create more consistency in that particular area of your life I just answer that question. It's not just what specifically could you do to create more consistency? So it might be, OK, well, follow up and follow through. If you are looking for work, actively do some research. You might say for the, you know, three times a week, I'm going to put at least an hour, 90 minutes, two hours, whatever it is. I'm going to do some research, look at job sites, see what's happening. 
if it's something to do with your life, you might say, right, well, I'm going to put aside again 30 minutes, an hour, whatever it might be to dedicate to this particular area of my life, whether that's reading, researching, speaking to people, crafting things that ask for help, taking that next logical step for you. And it's it's kind of figuring out what can I do in terms of what's my next step. Now, oftentimes when, they, when it comes down to a goal, of course, it's nice to get the whole thing in its entirety in the way that you said it, in the way that you want it. If you've never, um, there was a whole, it was very popular about 23 years ago. And it was the analogy about a Ferrari and someone wants a red Ferrari and they end up getting a blue Ferrari and they're all upset because it's not red. It's like, dude, just go and paint the darn thing. So, you know, or it wasn't a Ferrari, it was a Lamborghini. It's like, it was still a fast car. Get over yourself, sell it, buy the one you want, whatever. But you get the gist. It's that sort of thing. So you may not get the end result straight away or even exactly in the way you expect it. So take those next logical steps. And as you notice the green shoots along the way, celebrate them because the oak tree doesn't start as the oak tree. Little acorn, from little acorns do big oak trees grow. But even when you put that little acorn in the ground, you'd be like, no, nothing, nothing, nothing. <laughs> this could go on for months depending on the gestation period. However, beneath the surface, You've got those wonderful roots forming, but you can't see them with the naked eye. And then eventually you're going to get a little green shoot. Now you could go, well, that's no good. I wanted a tree <laughs> and stamp it out and you're never going to get your tree. Or you could go, cool, something's happening. <laughs> that's a move in the right direction. What's my next logical step? Oh, well, I, maybe I'll water this or I nurture it or I give it some nice fertilizer. And then what's your next logical step? Oh, well, I've seen a few little vermin. So maybe what I'm going to do is put one of those protective mesh covers over it just to stop the squirrels getting in. And and, it, and you just go, what's my next logical step? And 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 then once you kind of get past the logic, drop the word logic and just say, what's my next step? Because the next step might feel like a wild card. It might not feel logical, but it feels good. And this is the thing, you want to get your barometer as well. Is it light or is the feeling heavy? Not always, but typically when the feeling is heavy, it's not necessarily your you know, best choice of step. It's not so you can't do it, but if maybe there's a, a better way. <laughs> so just notice how it feels. If it feels light and right and even you're excited about it, then take the next step and it may open a door. That you didn't even conceive of right so there was a second card let me hold that one up there epiphany this is from the major arcana number nine so we're kind of edging towards halfway through and the major arcana is about big life journey almost like the a longer version of the archetypal journey so this is archangel raziel so this one says joy through spiritual growth be a light to others. We're just talking about light. Be a light to others. Answers that come through meditation. So I was just saying to you about asking the question, what's my next step? What's my next step? What's my next step? So a nice accompaniment to this, particularly if you're someone who isn't accustomed to meditating, having that quiet time then to get some of the answers that you are seeking in terms of what is the next step for you, have some quiet time, do some meditation. I call it putting the question out there into the universe and then being open to what comes back to you. And when you're in those times of stillness, in those times of meditation, I was also going to say in those moments of appreciation for what has unfolded and what is to come, even if you haven't got the whole thing you're going for, when you're in that particular place and space, you're more likely to have those things come through, what I call the divine guidance and divine inspiration. So be open to that. And also with regards to joy, one of the suggestions, and you don't have to 
follow anything I say. You can just like, yeah, whatever, next, and go on with the rest of your day in your life. But one of the things I might suggest is while you are on the journey to whatever it is you want to achieve in work life career, ensure that you are bringing in joy and allowing yourself to feel joy along the way. Because if you take the, are we nearly there yet? Are we nearly there yet? Are we nearly there yet? Are we nearly there yet approach? It's a really, potentially a really annoying journey. Whereas if you're like, oh, what joyful things await me today? Your focus isn't just on, I haven't achieved it yet, haven't done it yet, has a, uh, no, your focus is on what joy can I experience today? What do, what joyful things does today, this week, this month, this quarter, this half year, this year, what joyful things does it have to offer? And thinking, what can I do today to bring even more joy into my life? And what that means is you enjoy more of the journey. So that's what I would say about that in terms of big life questions. Right. So, so that's kind of an example of what we would do. We would kind of take something um, that is, and again, there might be a theme that comes up as people are chatting or talking, or it might be that in the interim with something that came up as part of it, then something else comes to mind and you think, yeah, 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 I want to, you know, that'll be fun to do. So that's what, that's kind of what I have planned. And then if we have a theme, so we'll probably, you know, I'm thinking possibly, depends on the theme, the theme might take up the whole call. And I'm thinking these will be around 30 minutes thereabout. So I think in that time, we've definitely got time to do a theme, a big life question. And then we've also got time to do one of the themes as well. So we're sequentially working our way through. Now, in terms of my AI image generator, I was thinking, well, why take part? And one of the things that came to mind was wisdom. I do like a good bit of wisdom Wednesday. And I just put wis just the word wisdom. And that was the image that came to mind. So I thought, right, I'll, I'll add that to the I'll add that to the slide presentation. If you're thinking, who is that woman? She's an AI woman. But I just that was what it came up with. Why would you take part? Why do this? These are some of the things that I'm thinking. So it will be, you know, you might be coming for insight. It might be inspiration for you. There's going to be a continual unfolding because as we work through each of those themes and we work through the questions, I suspect that there'll be things that interweave and each reading might deepen the one before. And it will also maybe something that started bubbling up, let's say in call number one, when we do call number four, it pops and you go, oh, my gosh, I've got it now because we're coming at some of these, some of the similar aspects from a number of different perspectives. I also for me, I'm thinking about it in terms of potential problem solving. So there might be something that you've been wrestling with and whatever we're talking about and whatever comes up with the cards that might then go, oh, actually, that's a great idea. I could do that or a good way to think about it. Solutions focus when we're doing the readings. The questions that we're asking, are kind of, OK, what can we do about this? What are some of those next steps? What are the insights and what are, what is it kind of bringing up? So going away with ideas, thoughts, solutions, tapping into the collective wisdom of those people who are there, because some of those questions will come from you. And of course, I do like a good bit of delicious food for thought. So those are some of the things I'm thinking in terms of why take part, why do this, why take this approach. And also with regards to the tarot, one of the things I find, and I know clients have said to me, Marion, you don't need the tarot, you just talk. But the tarot are a nice jumping off point. You know, they, again, that food for thought, you see an image and it then sparks something in you. But also it takes us out of the more logical approach. Oh yeah, why don't you just do this? Have you thought about that? Huh? It, it opens up something completely different, almost like, you know, one of the images I used for this was like that pulling back the veil, the portal. And that's the way I see this. So that those are some of the things I'm thinking in terms of why would you take part? And what are some of the benefits going to be that you get from this? So what I'm going to do very quickly, which deck is this one? OK, this is the money breakthrough deck. 
Hold on. It's in my drawer. Let me let me grab it. Alrighty, so what I thought we would do also, just in closing, actually, are the holding cards, have I taken the holding card? Oh, if I haven't, I'll just pull another one. Because there are holding cards, but I think I've taken them out. Right, so there's one. All right, so again, these look exactly the, they're all exactly the same on the back, but they're all completely different on this side. So again, I choose them facing away from me. So this is the Money Breakthrough deck. The Coaching Card deck, deck is more general. Money Breakthrough deck makes references to money because that's what it's all about. But you can substitute the word money and you can put work, career, life in there as well. Right, so give them a good old shuffle. So we want the energy and the vibe of this group and the people who are watching the replay. Let's see. <clears throat> Going to go for that one there. <sighs> oh, actually, now this one could actually relate to work and career, particularly if you are thinking about your work and career and whether that's if you work for someone else or work for yourself. So let me show you what this one says money boundaries so it says when it comes to asking for money get into the habit of asking for more than you need to avoid the trap of making ends meet just breaking even or or scraping by so i'm going to read that again money boundaries when it comes to asking for money get into the habit of asking for more than you need to avoid the trap of making ends meet, just breaking even or scraping by. So what I mean by this particular one, let's say you're going for a new job and you're currently earning £55,000, dollars, euro, yen, whatever it might be. It's OK, but, you know, not much left over. And with the prices of things going up, it's now, you know, feels more like you're earning 30000 so your next role, rather than going, oh, well, I'm just going to ask for another two or three thousand, you actually sit down and go, well, what is it I require that means that I'm not just scraping by, just making do? And you might say, well, actually, minimal baseline has got to be 60 and ideally it will be 65. The same can be due of pricing. If you've got a product that you are putting out, then looking at the cost in the infrastructure for that, and let's just say it costs you if it's a physical product for you to get the materials and to do the print press and to run off the this and the that and to get it packaged and bottled and shipped and all the rest. But let's just say it was 10. So to charging 10 50 doesn't make any sense, particularly if then you've got to send it to someone. And I don't know about where you live, but the price of postage here has gone through the roof. So you know that that's not viable. It was it's almost no point doing it. And if it, and even if it's a digital product, because sometimes people think digital products are free. No, when I finish running this webinar, I've got to pay for the hosting on that. And I tend to offer lifetime access to many of the things that I do. So I really do need to factor that into the equation to say, well, somebody's got to pay for that hosting every single month. So that as and when people want to press play, it's there for them. And actually, somebody's got to pay for the time that it actually sits to takes to sit and build this thing and set up the pages and send them out and do the marketing and hope that people will share it and click the like. And all. it all takes time to sit and do the, the slides it all takes time. And also all of that will be factored in. So if you come up with a number that is just a little smidgen over it create more issues for yourself so this one is saying be more expansive factor everything in and then also in retail terms they call it your margin there's your margin and your markup make sure you're factoring that in as well so when you sit before the new employer now it's all very well coming up with a big number if you don't feel the number if you're not congruent about the number, then when you turn up for the interview, they say, so, you know, what did you have in mind in terms of salary, particularly if it's one they haven't advertised a salary and you go 65, they're going to laugh you out of town and they're going to offer you 45 and you're probably going to take it because you're just like, oh, God, anything will do. I feel embarrassed now that I oh, didn't get well, but maybe I can work my way up. <laughs> Practice the number, say the number. 
even justify the number to yourself in your own mind. You might just be doing the L'Oreal thing and then going, because I'm worth it. And that's enough, just all the justification you need. But if you're not feeling it, then go, OK, why am I asking for this? Boom, 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 boom. There are practical reasons. So, you know, the practical is going to be the foundation. And then you say, and what am I bringing to the table? If we come back to L'Oreal, do I believe I am worth it? And if the answer is no, then you might go back and reevaluate. But my suggestion would be if you kind of go, no, 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 I believe that's a fair price. I actually think that's a good price. And it, it could even be even more. Do the work, the internal work to bring you into alignment with that. So when you say the number, you're absolutely congruent and confident about it. And the other person doesn't take that as the um, negotiated, you know, to come lower they're actually going to use that as the jumping off point and the baseline point. And you might even get congruent saying a number which is more than you actually require if it's about work and career, jobs, etc. because they might surprise you and just go, OK, great, when can you start? And I had that happen to me once I was looking for a job. And I came up with a number which was a big number. It was double what I was currently earning, double. So I practiced, everything I'm saying to you, I practiced saying it, I practiced saying it, so I wasn't going, when I was saying it, I was like, just came out. You know what happened? I'm in the interview. Three directors are sat there. What do you bring to the table? Why should we hire you? Boom, boom, boom. And I just laid it all out. Why I was going to be an incredible choice for them. All of the unique things I brought to the table. They then come to the question. Well, actually, I'd never been asked that question before because I'd always gone for jobs where the salary was advertised or at least the salary range. And they said, OK, so what do you want to be paid? I was like, oh, crap, I didn't expect that. But I've been playing with the number that I'd be happy with. So I say the number confidently. You know what happened next? So I went, great, when can you start? Now, when I told my then partner, John, RIP, is no longer with us, he said, I bet you wish you asked for more money. I'm like, damn straight, I should have asked for more. But it was a big number for me at the time. But I had practiced saying it and being confident and being congruent about it just rolled off the tongue and to my surprise I just said great when can you start and I know now based on what they were paying some of the consultants they're probably laughing going whoa that's cheaper half the price if only I'd known and that I'd also say do your research do your research as well see what's what's going on so that's what I'd say about the money boundaries card as we just kind of finish off in closing so if you've got any questions queries feedback you know, put them into the chat, put them into the q and A. I I will answer those for you. And actually, I'll, maybe I'll take a photo of those. I'll put those on Facebook as well in terms of the photos of the cards if you want to um, have a look at them later. Cool. And it, oh, actually, hold on. All good. Thank you. Wonderful. Hold on. Let me click there. Oh, when, it, when are you likely to start? I'm not sure yet if I am even going to start. I'm not sure. I mean, I like the idea, but me liking the idea and other people responding to the idea and go, yes, I'm in. Sign me up. I want to do it. It's going to remain to be seen. So what I'm going to do is this will render. So the people who pre-registered that weren't here live, they're going to get a copy of it. What I'll probably also do with this one um, is pull it down, or not pull it down, uh, do a download of it. And I might add it to YouTube, for example. I'll share it on my socials, et cetera. And then I'll just see in the next couple of days what the responsive life is. People are like, oh, it sounds interesting, but not sure I want to do it now, et cetera. I'm not going to do it because there's no point sitting here talking to myself. But if people are interested, like, yeah, I'm in, I'm interested, I would like to do it, then I would say I would. it would be nice, actually, to start at the start of next month. So Because, you know, just start of a month is nice. So that first week of, of next month would be good. And then uh, we'll have a little play. And actually, for those of you who are here live, I'm not, I'm, this is not like, are you doing it, et cetera. But if you were, What's your sense from what we've done? We've had all the extra bit about what is it? Why am I doing it? What am I expecting? But when we actually do the call, my thinking is it going to be about 30 minutes. So short and sweet, boom, deliver the information. So half the time on the theme, half the time on the big life questions, plus a bit of time at the end for, you know, questions, conversation, etc. Weekly, bi-weekly is it every two, two weeks? monthly what do you think what are your initial thoughts um somebody and actually that's the thing um because sorry somebody said um, during the summer could be weekly because there's not as much in the diary that's a really good point at first I called this the summer series but then I realized 
we don't have much summer in the UK. So in about four weeks, there's like, bye-bye summer. Would have been nice if you'd dropped by for longer, but hey, it is what it is. So I called it the summer series, but um, what I'm thinking, and because they'll be recorded, don't have to be at everyone, but yeah, and that's why I was thinking possibly every two weeks. So it doesn't feel like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, and galloping, or it could be once a month. And it'll be just a nice touch point every single month get the guidance, get the inside, get that food for thought, all of that sort of stuff. So yeah, but let me know if you have any thoughts. Now you've kind of had a taster of what I'm planning. Let me know if you think weekly, every two weeks, once a month, your feedback would be brilliant on that as well. And if there's anything else that, we're, that if we've kind of logged off by the time you think of your question, ping me an email. So I just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you for signing up. Thank you for those who are here live, able to join me. Any questions, any queries, ping me an email. Easiest way is email. Don't bother phoning because the phone is normally switched off. And um, that's what is grayed out because it's switched off right now. So it doesn't ring in the middle of the recording. Easiest way is ping me an email, marilyn at transformationstm.com. You can also head to the main website, www.transformationstm.com. There's a contact page, so you can then get the email from there. And there's a red watch new button. So if I do decide that I'm going to do this, once I've set it all up, I will add it to the what's, what's new section. So when you click the red what's new button, a panel slides out and that's forthcoming events. So it lets you know what's what's going on. So what I will do is I'll add something there as well so you can see what's actually coming up and you can register from there but that's it really final thing i wanted to say is just notice what you notice so this is from the both my coaching cards deck and i also put it in the money breakthrough deck so one of the things that it says it said the card is called notice so it says one of the things i've been saying to my coaching clients since the year 2000 is notice what you notice this simple phrase heightens your awareness of what is going on around you in terms of positive change and transformation. So one of the things I would definitely say, expect great results. Be OK with what happened, whatever happens or not, as the case may be. As I said, it might always maybe align in the way that you were wanting or planning as, as things come together. Enjoy the process. So the whole thing about this particular card, joy through spiritual growth, really take that on board and ask yourself, what can you do to bring more joy into your day? Pay attention to your intuitive guidance. That's what I call the divine guidance, the divine inspiration. Number five, remember, not everything is above the surface. So coming back to what I said about planting the seed and having those things happening underneath the surface, you can't see them yet. And also, number six, it may be an unfolding that everything isn't going to happen all at once. For those of you who have been around back in the day and you watched the movie The Secret, I think it was the bit that Mike Dooley did about going on safari to Africa. And then an elephant <laughs> appears in his living room as he has a thought and then drops a big pile of dung. <laughs> and it's that whole thing. <laughs> Sometimes you don't want everything to <gasps> manifest and come to fruition straight at once because there's a process. And then number seven notice what you notice so thank you thank you thank you for joining me for those who are able to be here live thank you also for those of you who signed up for the replay and if you're watching this on the socials thank you very much for that also if you're on youtube if i happen to put this on youtube please hit the subscribe button you, you two and i had a, an interesting thing going on so please subscribe to the channel if you find the video interesting and of course if you know if it might be that this isn't a good fit for you if you know someone who could benefit from taking part in this and might be interested, please feel free to share the link to this video. And if I do subsequently run it, the link to whatever the booking page will be, that would be absolutely amazing and very much appreciated because the algorithms are such now that it's getting ever more challenging. So share, like, thumbs up if you have taken part, you've done a reading or something with me before feel free to say a few words because that also bumps the algorithm up so saying a few words as you share or something in the comments always really helps cool well thank you all for joining me hope that you found that useful bit of food for thought and what you might want to do is revisit the recording of the readings in a couple of months time and with the gift of hindsight 
see what has unfolded. All right, we shall leave it there. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And if we run this as a series, I look forward to working with you all soon. Wonderful, brilliant. No, you are most welcome. Thank you for joining me. And yes, it will be. Uh, sorry, the question is, um, how will I net? Not net, net. How will I let people know if I do this? Um, first instance, it will be out on my e-newsletter list. So when I share the video for this, um, I will you know, I'll pose the same question, tell people to watch the video, let me know if they're interested. So first and foremost, the easiest way to make sure you see it is the e-newsletter list. And once you land on transformationstm.com, for those who are watching this who are not on the list, top left, you'll see a box where you can sign up for the e-newsletter list. And I will share it on my socials, but I just know from the algorithms, there'll be things that um, will appear, I think the longest one so far has been 12 days after the live event is when it started showing up on the feed. So keep an eye on the socials. Easiest thing is actually go to my page on LinkedIn, Facebook, um, Instagram, Twitter, etc. And it's just um, Marilyn Devonish, at Marilyn Devonish, except for Instagram, the Neuro Success Coach. So those will be the, the two ways that you could you could mainly find it. Cool. All right. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Well, I shall leave it there. And uh, let's, uh, I shall stop the recording and uh, maybe, maybe, maybe I will see you for the series. Maybe not. Maybe this was just a fun interlude. And yeah, wishing you a fabulous rest of your morning, afternoon or evening. Marilyn Devnish, the Neuro Success Coach from TransformationsTM.com, over and out. <laughs>